Uh, I am your host uh, slash facilitator of this game slash game master today. Uh, I am Erica Volgaris, for those who don't know me. Uh, I'm a dude on the internet who, who likes indie RPGs so much that I, I kidnap people and force them to play with me. Um, so, uh, once upon a game, uh, we it's a I do this now three times a week. Uh, we, we try to feature as many games as we can as we as we continue going through. It's always a work in progress uh, as, as I continue to uh, develop different cool ideas for this kind of stuff. Um, so thanks for thanks for tuning in, and uh, I hope you enjoy uh, today's season two episode seven's episode and featured game, um, the Devil John Moulton. Um, so before I get into what that game is about, um, how about let's let's talk about who we are. Uh, so I kind of talked a little bit about me. Uh, so let's let's bring it down here to to Fo below. So Fo, how are you doing today? Good morning. Uh, afternoon, evening, good night. Uh, how's it going? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Excited. Ex- super <laughs> excited about this game. This is. I've been reading the rule book. I've been listening to appropriate soundtrack. Um, it's yeah. I'm just. I'm pumped about this game. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Just ready to go. Mm-hmm. Cool. Adam, what about you, my friend? Hello. Hey. Uh, I'm doing good. Hope you guys are also doing good. I am also super excited. Um. I kind of just signed up, and then I read out the game, and I was like, yeah, I'm glad I signed up. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's do some awesome occult Western stuff. And, uh, and Nick, how about you today? Hello. I just finished my eighth blood ritual for the day, and it's only been like three hours since I woke up, so I'd, I'd say I'm doing pretty good. I think oh! I'm in the spirit for this. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely in the spirit. So um, let's talk about the Devil John Moulton. Um, so the Devil John Moulton is an occult Western game. And uh, so this is also one of the first RPGs I ever streamed. Uh, so this is really cool coming back to this game finally. Um, so this is this is the premise that I wrote up for the. This is before anybody before I like really hung out with uh, everybody here on like Matt Squad or or like anything. Um, I wrote up a premise for for um, on, on a couple of subreddits looking for players, and this is what, this is how I describe the game. Uh, somewhere across the vast American West is the gun-toting huckster son of a bitch who wronged your life six ways to Sunday. You rounded up a posse looking for their fill of reckoning, revenge, and or redemption. You roll with them from town to town, riding the wake of your quarry, uh, each step getting you closer. Time's winding down for the one they call the Devil John Moulton. Um, so yeah, this game is a game about revenge um, in the Wild West. Uh, using um, demonic spirit kind of stuff. Uh, I think I think I, I, I coined this today uh, a little bit before going live. It is kind of like Dogs in the Vineyard, directed by Quentin Tarantino. If that helps anybody, that works. Um, yep. <laughs> you are you are sort of like a very powerful um, kind of like just drifter kind of person who um, just kind of has so much authority and and like control over everyone else that uh, you can kind of just have your way, but. Uh, the interesting part of this game is that the more you succeed, the more you are likely to fail later using those skills. Um, the way the game works is that you have a very like ablative sort of skill set, so you have like four skills uh, that represent everything you could ever do. Um, and the way you do that, uh, and the way, the way you would invoke one of those skills is that um, the the ability to succeed very well at that skill means that you get uh, less. It increases or decreases your ability to use it again later. Uh, so if you roll lower, you have a less intended effect immediately, but you can serve some of that ability for later. Uh, so it's a very interesting game uh, where we're like whittling away at our characters. Uh, the way I described it a long, long time ago is that you're kind of like a firecracker and you're trying to get and kill the devil John Molden before you explode yourself. Uh, so it's very much like a movie like that. Um, but... Uh, before we get any further into the game, describe our characters and who we are and all that kind of stuff. Um, before we do that, um, the first thing we need to do is is talk about the first strongest, biggest rule and the only rule really about Once Upon a Game, and that's the X card. Um, so if there's anything that's un- anybody's uncomfortable with anything like that uh, that going on in the game, if I if anybody puts in some sort of like idea or puts your you or just the game in a certain situation where you're not really not really a fan of it for whatever reason. 
Um, you can do uh, what's called uh, the X. Like you can like do like a giant X. You could do a little X. You could just type X. Um, you could just whisper me X if you're not really comfortable and don't want to bring it up. Um, and like magic, uh, I I eradicate it from from the game. Uh, we we all we all agree just not to question you about it. Um, regarding like why or you don't have to justify this, which is super important because we trust you. And uh, the only other thing we might end up doing would be like, hey, so you're not really into talking dogs, but like are regular dogs okay? You know, <laughs> like um, like I don't like you know just kind of like a find the barrier kind of thing. So um, yeah, uh, that's that's like the number one rule, and that rule only works uh, as long as we're okay with it, right? So so do we have buy in today for that? Absolutely, yes, one hundred percent. Awesome. Good to hear. Good because you know if if you didn't, uh, I don't think we'll be able to play. Mm -hmm. So this because this is this game's uh, this game that won uh, the devil John Moulton as well as Once Upon a Game. We only do one shots here, and because we do one shots, uh, I encourage people to kind of just like bring it right and and go really hard and like change something. You know, like <laughs> you know, uh, don't 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 hold back. Um, and and the way you could do that safely is with. The X card. That's our that's our emergency brake. That's our that's our parachute. That's our ejection seat. Um, you know that's that's how we that's how we keep things safe and cool. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's get to creating characters uh, for for this game today. Uh, there's a we're, we have to amend kind of the rules for how to make characters slightly for this game. Um, the original, as written, is that you draw five cards and then you kind of like rotate your hand after you select one card about your character uh, until you have four cards. Um, because we don't we we don't have an ability online to transfer cards to one another. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is uh, we, we we've beforehand selected three cards and then selected another card for our player to our left. Is how we're going to do it today. So I just want to let you guys know that we are not playing this exactly as written for that. And I'm sorry, but uh, due to the technical limitations, that's what we're doing today. Right, yeah. It's okay. The RPG police are just going to come knocking yeah. at the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They rappel down my, my apartment buildings and like break right, right through the window. Smash through the window, yeah. Well, they're, they're going to have to roll the through. Oh, that's, body that's armor true. with the Roll20 logo on it somewhere. <laughs> So you, you just see a bunch of cops outside your window, and you see like them with a little table, and they you, you see them like just shaking their hand, like crap. And they pull out another die and they shake it. They just, <laughs> and then them. one of them just finally pulls out a baton after they get yeah. the right roll. <laughs> Got it. Finally, okay, we can go. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly the, the, the police, the, clearly the police don't use a let it ride mechanic. <laughs> well, yeah. So okay, it's so a very, it's a very crunchy system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the police. <laughs> so who wants to go uh, first with their character design? Who wants to start talking about their character a little bit? Uh, do I have all this together? Um, I, I'll go if no one else is. Um, so uh, I'm just detailing like all the cards I picked and the name and everything, right? Yep. And my general idea. Okay. So the, the character that I've kind of created through pulling the cards is uh, Laszlo Forbes. Um and he is a drifter that uh, ended up kind of burning down his hometown to erase a large part of his existence and just kind of wipe himself okay. off the map. That's where we're going. Um, and uh, in the end, he uh, is just trying to reach this level of immortality comparable to the, uh, the demon lord John Moulton. And he thinks that in the process of doing that, he needs to basically take out as many like competitors and anyone that can remember him as possible so that he can just basically have a very long lasting immortality where no one bothers him. Okay, cool. Oh, I, got, I get that idea. Okay, I can work with that. Um, so... Uh, something that I need from you is I need to know your four skill dies. Uh, so ah, what okay. is your way of the bastard? So my way of the bastard is a D6. Would that be correct? Because it's a, it's only gone up by... Um, oh, hang on. It might be... Uh, and um, Yeah. So, uh, so the card selection... The, the way the character gen works for everybody in the audience. Um, the cards that you select... Uh, are are they give you a, a raise to one of your skills? So everybody's skill starts at a D four, but when you, whenever you select a card, that will that will bump up one of your four skills up here. 
And uh, just so uh, I'll, I'm gonna let everyone know the four different skills so they know what we're talking about here. Uh, the first skill I'll talk about is the way of the gun. Um, and what's cool about every skill in this game is that this the game also gives you the uh, narrative outcome for when you fail using that skill and you would ultimately die from it. Um, so the way of the gun, um, the way you would die from that is that you get gunned down like a dog. Um, mm -hmm. You roll away of the gun whenever you want to harm, kill, or frighten someone. Whenever you're using violence or brutality to get your way, that is when you use way of the gun. Uh, mm -hmm. Way of the bastard, uh, if you if you uh, die using way of the bastard, uh, you become corrupted and get turned into a demon. Um, yeah, you roll way of the bastard whenever you're trying to use deception or villainy to get what you want. Like if you want to frame an innocent for murder, uh, lead your enemies into an ambush, cheat at poker, or escape from jail. Uh, the way of the bastard is all about being a no good, dirty, rotten asshole to others. Uh, the third skill is the way of the soul. Uh, the end game for the way of the soul is that you sacrificed yourself to save a life of another. Uh, so, way of the soul governs attempts at peaceful resolution and open communication. Uh, the soul is about finding a smarter way out of a tense situation. Uh, whenever you're using honesty or integrity to get what you want, you roll ray of the soul. And then the last one is the way of the drifter. Um, the way of the drifter, uh, if, you, if you die using way of the drifter, is that... Uh, you will lose all connection to this world. At the end of this town, or whatever, wherever we are, uh, you ride off in the desert wastes saying, you know, screw this, I'm out. Peace. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> you roll Way of the Drifter uh, whenever you use physical motion to get what you want or whenever you're acting alone. Uh, so riding horses, climbing at the, speed of a, uh, climbing the side of a speeding train car, um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it, it is a blue snowball. I hope to die horribly and become a demon. So, um, <laughs> my bastard score is a d8, so the threshold for that's 8. Yes. Uh, my way of the gun is a d6, and the remaining are d4. Um, should I also bring Wait, up. Way of a... the gun was d6? Yes. Okay, and the other and two are d4. Soul and Drifter D4. Um, should I also bring up the demonic power that I start with? Because I do have one. Uh, yeah, but give me give me one second. Just gonna finish typing out these. Just making my my notes for myself here. Mm -hmm. Keep track of this stuff. I also want to make sure that you guys are keeping track and keeping this uh, true whenever time whenever these things get bumped up. So the way this game works is that uh, so whatever your your highest number die is. So for example, here for Laszlo Forbes. Uh, his way of the bastard is a d8, which means that he starts with a point value of, of, of 8 in way of the bastard, aka like the highest value of the die. And then every time he uses it and uses it well, uh, that gets ticked down. That gets chipped away. So the next time it would be 7, and then 6, and then 5, right? Um, and then whenever you get to the threshold of, of your die, which is, always starts at the lowest value, so a 1, so, like, if he had a 2 and then he succeeded and rolled a 1, then he would actually die uh, mm -hmm. using that skill because your, your skill would equal your threshold. Um, and over the course of the game, when you take damage, your threshold goes up. Um, whenever, you, whenever you want to heal a skill to increase your, your value thing again, your threshold goes up, but you reset the, the point value. Uh, it will make more sense in play. But mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, ablative mechanic. Cool. So, um, in addition to the four skills that we have, um, everybody also has a demonic power. This is something that we you sold your soul for. Yeah, rock out. <laughs> um, Raise your horns, man. <laughs> so the oh, I'm sorry. It's called a demonic miracle. Is actually the the title right, yeah. of the game. Um, so it's called, it's called the branding. way. There's, this is actually a collaborative part of the game because um, Nick is going to go ahead and tell us what Laszlo's power is. However, as a group, we determine what the demonic uh, cost was to get it. Technically, I have two okay. because I have one from the card and then my native one that I get. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so uh, lay them out. What, which ones do you got? Okay, so because I, I, I kind of want to just generate the other one spontaneously because this one's already written up. The first one I have is the Risen Dead principle, or I keep saying principle, uh, miracle. Um, so I get to rise at the next full moon if I die, but every single time I do so, I come back less human. 
Mm. So what is the um, what is the initial price that you had to pay for that? Uh, the initial sin. Hmm. Uh, can I tie it into one of the prompts that I got from my other cards? Uh, you could, but also this is also open to everybody at the table. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. All right. My best. The table as a whole, uh, brainstorm something even worse. Okay. So, um, we, we set, we set the initial act for free. So it's basically the way the game will work is that, um, if you would ever die, um, you would come back for the dead for free because the D wing gives you the first one for free. However, right. the next time it exacts a toll. Okay. I um, thought you were talking about the sin that I had to pay in order to get the miracle to begin with. Oh, no, I want to hear about that too, actually. But okay. let's let's come up with first the the the, the price or like the sin. Um, all right, all of you make me suffer. Go ahead. Mhm. <laughs> um I mean, I feel like life for life is pretty pretty obvious. It's that like you have to kill somebody. Mm. Well, the book kind of recommended against murder, though, because yeah. like it yeah. ramps it up really hard. But I mean, you know, um, it is really powerful. So if you guys want to limit it that way, we could. Ch what if it's uh, rather than like take away someone's life, make someone's life not worth living? <laughs> that's, that's pretty dark. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's where it starts. Okay. All right. You have to uh, remove. You've actually one. given me something kind of fun to do, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> you have I'll to remove it. someone's source of pure joy. Something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. No. Oh yeah, that. yeah. Like, you have to kill someone's joy. All right. I like that. Okay, so that's your first power, and what's your second? The bunny's power? in the rabbit the whole time, kids. Look at that. Oh, um, actually, <laughs> before you do your second power, maybe um, do you want to describe how you got this power? Or um, wanna... I'm. I'm thinking that I basically had to sacrifice a huge amount of life in order to get it to begin with, so that was tied into what Your part of why I burned down the yeah. town. Yeah, okay. Basically, killed like a hundred birds with one stone, and the stone was on fire. Got it. And the birds were people. And the birds were people. So did you like lock them up in the barn and light it on fire or something? <laughs> Probably something like that, or maybe just during mass, I just lit fire to the church oh, okay. after, which oh, okay. slamming the doors closed. Well, shit. Um. <laughs> I am evil. Uh, and then I think for the second power... No, this, uh, this is going to be hard. I don't want to limit myself too greatly, but I don't want to be like super overpowered either. Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, um, sorry, just for clarification. Mm -hmm. If I'm... I, I am allowed to basically just create whatever power I want as like my innate de uh, demonic miracle, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure that I don't have to pick from the cards. No, nope. because um, like can, the way that, the I... way the game describes it is that um, you 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 sold your soul for this power, so like it's powerful, right. and demons yeah. encourage you to give you a, a tons of rope to hang yourself, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, can I actually can we come back to this? Because like I want to I want to think of something like really great. Cool. And then just like let everyone do their stuff first. Totally, totally. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So who who, who wants to go? Foe or, fo or Adam? Uh, if you're good, I'm still piecing stuff together. Or yeah, I can I can go ahead. I think. Um. So I am going to be uh, Quinn Clearheart, um, who is an uh, I guess ex criminal. Um. Used to do ye oldy style bank robberies with a, a criminal partner. Um, they've since uh, split up, I guess. Um, and her name was Genoese Darmitz. Um, Ooh. Yeah, it's a great name. Um, so um, I am on the hunt for the devil, John Moulton, uh, because. Um, I'm unsatisfied with my power's consequences, and mm. so I would like to uh, take it out on him. Oh, okay. I feel like I've been given a bum deal. Awesome. So, um, 
let's start with that. What is your power that gave you a bum deal? I'm sorry, I just I gotta know. I gotta know before we do our stats. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the power is um, to uh, make people forget me. <laughs> I was just thinking of that. Um, kind of like hand wave and be like, I was never here. Okay. Uh, um, so what's the cost of memory? Um, hmm. I, I had an idea, but this is up to you guys, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Destroy something of, I mean, I want to say destroy something of value of your own. Right? I was going to say you have to give up a happy memory of yours. Oh, damn. Trade, trade, wow. like, every last happy memory, memory, memory. You have Until you're just yeah. a hollow shell with nothing. I like that. I like that for mm -hmm. now. And yeah. then eventually you forget yourself. Yeah. So I've got nothing but misery in my memories. Yeah. So no one remembers you, and then you remember no one eventually. Make, yeah. Make your own power forget becomes you. ruin. And, yeah, of course. I mean, that sounds perfect, right, for a demon? Yeah, it's pretty okay. harsh. So what's um? what are your way of the bastard, drifter, gun, and soul? Uh, so let's see. Uh, it starts at the D4, right? Yes. Uh, so my gun is a D4. Um, my drifter and soul are both D6s, and then I have a D8 and bastard. Seems right. Cool. Four, one, four, one. Awesome, guys. Um, Adam? Yes. All right. So. Uh, I, be, what, I will be playing Pete McCluskey. Hmm. He is... Um, he was a sheriff um, somewhere else in our generic west. Uh, he left the town that he was sheriff of because he he was generally known as a pretty good sheriff. You know, like he kept out all the rascals and the varmints mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but then um, his wife was like brutally murdered and he never could find who did it hmm. mm. and so like it was kind of like a, oh you're it was both like a the town lost faith in him and he lost faith in him in his own ability to do it oh okay yeah yeah um so it was really sour okay <laughs> um should we start with your power or do you want to do your stats um yep sure i can uh stats are I can give you the numbers for those. Okay. Um, so, way of the gun is D six. Mm -hmm. Way of the bastard is D eight. Way of the drifter is D six. And way of the soul is D four. Guys are like fuck way of the soul. <laughs> so, what's your power? Um. So, are we going with um, describing who our demons are? Uh, as well a little bit yeah if you want okay so um i guess i'll describe my demon and then through that my my power um so my demon's name is the good doctor he is like an older gentleman like a nice like a really really nice old western timey suit mm -hmm. um like glasses and um uh, and of course to make him demonic he's got like red eyes and he's always very s smoky and foggy um but basically uh picture sigmund freud and that's oh, who, okay, yeah. That's, yeah. Who, that's who my demon is. And so the demonic miracle I have is um, if I want something from somebody, I um, the, the good doctor will tell me what they want, and I can become or get that for them. And then through that, I get what I want from them. Wait, wait. So does the doctor give you the power to get what they want? Basically, it's like it's it's not like it. Or, if the, it's or like, just the ability for you to know what they actually want. It's it's like it's more of like an illusory thing. So like, they think I can give them what what they want. Oh, they oh I got it I got it okay. Yeah, so it's like I need a million dollars to do that. Like okay, 
Yeah, it's like, oh, well, look at this banknote certifying that I have a million dollars, right? Yeah, exactly. And, so just, like, and, and then, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, then here's that mm. thing you wanted. And then I leave, and the banknote just kind of turns into ash or something or whatever. Oh, oh okay. okay. And so feel free to say whatever price that entails. Mm. Hmm. Knowledge and power of what people want. Um, I don't know. I need help. What do we think? Well, I've noticed that we've usually made the price of these like something contrapositive. Poetic, to yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do we do we want to keep up with that theme? I, I think so. Yeah. I, I was thinking okay. um, that. Um, Mm. something about never being able to be given something or like gifted something that every time you're you're given anything whether that be a physical thing or like a service for free you, you cannot accept it something like that someone's like oh you look cold here's a warm house and a free meal you have to be like no mm. you can never you can never accept um people's gifts sure Charity, yeah. Oh, I don't. I kind of want to add another layer onto that. Mm -hmm. Okay, explain. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking about it, but I'm I'm considering maybe like he can never accrue any personal wealth because he ends up just rapidly spending it all impulsively. Hmm. But well, and this is all, and the the price is just. For the next use of it and then after after i use it the next time after that it'll it gets, change it, it raises yeah yeah. It yeah it gets higher and higher every time you use it but we, we should pick something that starts a little bit smaller than i think yeah um so i guess or, i mean i like yeah. the, i also like the idea of destroying charity of others and like you have to do <laughs> something like that yeah oh you need to give something in return for charity that's what signal kill a nun um hmm <laughs> hmm. what, is the, what is the good doctor ask for in exchange for the knowledge and power of what people want yeah what does the good doctor want from you <sighs> I think the good doctor is all about like figuring out like or like knowing and exploiting how like how people's brains work mm -hmm. like taking psychology to a very dark place basically yeah definitely and so um huh. uh i mean from that uh a, a different way of doing this would be you have to um bring like a body to to somewhere for science right like <laughs> for science he, he needs he needs to look <laughs> at a brain right Oh, so you have to like go out and actively try to find cadavers or make yeah, your own. Yeah, exactly. Or make my own. Right, bring a bring a cadaver for him. Well, we give you the option. There we go. You mm -hmm. don't you don't have to begin by killing people in order to get their bodies for science. What if what if you actually need to bring a cadaver of somebody um a blood relative to the person? And oh. that he like analyzes their brain and like that that that's still a little bit extreme though. Yeah. Like okay. that might be a, that might be a step up. Like okay. maybe um, so yeah. like, so is the first one anybody? So is the first one anyone? Yeah, I think I just anybody like... would be a good way to start. Okay. And I don't think it's a cadaver. I feel like it's someone that's alive. Oh, okay. Okay. The first the first one oh, is someone like that's alive or... or just live autopsies? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, so a vivisection? I guess. God. Okay, um, so that's a good point. So we need to know the demon's name and descriptions for everyone else too. Right. So what's Laszlo's demon's name? Okay, so um, and I have the second one at this point, but for the awesome. first one, uh, it's just the fetid muck, and it's this black pit that just kind of spreads itself out somewhere outside of a town, usually near a grave. Every time I rise. Ugh. So you rise from uh, a Lazarus pit. Exactly. <laughs> The, the the themes are there, um, and so the uh, second ability I picked to pair with that is that when I die, I can possess another body until mine is ready again. So Ooh. for the duration of that month, I can basically just take someone else. Okay. Oh, I can. And convey that. my convey my stats to them. Okay. So. Um, um, okay. So the fetid muck. Are you? Do you have another demon that you you sold your soul to, or is it the same? Uh, second one. 
Oh my god. Oh, two demons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this one I'm calling the Grey Maiden, and uh, my description for her is that she whisks the souls from their bodies to frolic in eternity. So she basically just coaxes souls away from their bodies and lets me possess them. Cool. Which means you guys have to pick another thing that I owe in return for that as well. So wait, wait, so what does the Grey Maiden do exactly, explicitly? Uh, in In metaphysical terms she basically goes to like a person in their sleep or something and effectively just like appears to them as a as a their dream ideal woman or man or whatever and whisks their soul off to go frolic with her wherever and ends up just dragging them down to hell and i possess the body until I'm ready for my new one. Oh, uh possess a body of someone sleeping yeah, basically. It, it could just be someone that she, you know, took from a crowd oh, okay. and I like, possess the body and I okay, just... Okay, so just possess the body of someone. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, so the cost... What would be the cost of that, of possession? Um, um, <sighs> hmm. Huh. Yeah, that's uh, Sign I, Signor in, in chat got it right for for Pete McCluskey. Yeah, if the cost would be bring someone with an increasing connection to the one providing the charity. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Grey Maiden. I feel like it's got to be something that you lose a part of the original body. Like every time. Oh, you, okay. Like, I see where you're going. To come back in that body, you have to like give get up a piece of it. it. Mm -hmm. So not only do I appear less human, I start just losing limbs or fingers. Or well, something. it starts with like a fingernail, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Like that. So my immortality of... slowly makes me less immortal. I like that. So you so lose are parts you... of yourself. Okay. Are you forever possessing new bodies or do you eventually get your body? I possess the body for the month until my new one rises at the full moon, and then oh, okay. I possess okay. my okay. body. Gotcha. So, um, cool. And what about Quinn? What was Quinn's demon? Hmm. Is this a literal, like, human, or is it just, like, a manifestation? A uh, manifestation. Yeah, yeah of, of any type. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, this is the being, this is the entity that the devil John Moulton uh, taught you how to bind. Right. Okay, cool. Um, to commune with. I think it's like it's been put inside an old wallet that I've stolen along the way. Um, but inside the wallet, there's like a keepsake photograph mm. of like someone that that person once loved. Mm. Uh, and uh, whenever I open the wallet to commune with the demon, the photograph comes to life. Mm. Uh, it speaks to me. Cool. Um, can, it, can I uh, can I pose a little bit of a suggestion to add on to that? Go ahead. As you lose memories, more and more of the photograph kind of burns away every time you look at it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, like nice. the edges get frayed. Yeah. yeah totally. Is it is it a photograph of? Uh, can I can I actually add on that as well? Mm -hmm. uh, is it a photograph of Genoese? Uh, it is absolutely a photograph of Genoese. It's, it's a photograph of Genoese as like it's like a keepsake that you have, and every time you use your power, it gets more and more like burned away, yeah, yeah, yeah. more like and every time, more like every corrupted. Time. Actually, yeah, right. Oh yeah, just the photo changes to be like more and more decrepit. Sinister, yeah, <laughs> sinister. Like the the house in the background, just like bits like, of it who's starting start yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Cool. yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Cool. Um, so last but not least, uh, we need to know uh, why you need the help of the the shady feller on your right. So. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. So this time it would be Nick. You need you need Adam, and Adam you need Fo. So so okay. So Laszlo <laughs> needs Pete, and and uh, and Pete needs Fo, or, or Quinn, and Quinn needs Laszlo. Yeah. Hmm. Would totally so he would totally take a succubus. Yeah, succubus would probably be cool. Um, mm. I think Quinn uh, is in need of someone to like remind them where they're going and where they are and what they've done. 
like someone to kind of point them in the right direction uh, in that kind of way. So. So the immortal, horrible spirit man is the guy who has to be yeah. the one to do it. So, yeah. so, Pete, so Pete's almost like your like moral compass. Yeah, like a, not only a moral compass, but a literal compass also. Like kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Oh, I am gonna fuck with you so hard. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> That's great. I'm tossing right, I that. easy softball for you to just. Not yeah, yeah, it. I like that. I like that. Um. God. Hmm. That's okay. good. I I'm thinking I need Quinn, like since he is maybe Quinn is a criminal that I once put away, like you know, b way back when when I was actually still a sheriff, and so I kind of know him, and so like now now that we're at this point, like I know I need Quinn because he knows criminal stuff, and clearly I don't. Oh shit, that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so like we're hunting so that, for it's John. like uh yeah yeah totally yeah. Oh, all right. Then I know what I want Pete McCluskey for. I need I need a face that the people can kind of latch onto and that I can kind of just follow in the shadow of. So we literally have a good, the bad, and the ugly. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> awesome. The okay. people need a face that isn't like decrepit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need someone who isn't a zombie walking around that can talk to people and give them shit. Cool. <laughs> so do you do you like wear like a bandana or like do you do you wear something like the? I think I probably like you? bandage up my face most of the time. Okay, so you so you almost look like the like. Oh man, can I can I um add something? Sure. Uh, or suggest something? Mm -hmm. Do people think you're like a leper? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Parts of my body, and I'm constantly bandaged up, and I have yeah. like a massive hat that I tilt downward. Yeah. So um so now we each get to develop some facts about the devil, John Moulton. Uh, what? So I'm going I'm going to offer all these questions here, and then I need everybody to answer one of them, at least okay. one, right? Uh, I don't care if it's the same, um, whenever you guys want to do. So the first one is, what makes the Devil John worse than your player character? Oh. What ominous portents signify the Devil John's approach? Uh, how can you identify when the Devil John's corruption has spread to a town? Uh, what horrific misdeeds has the Devil John performed? Which were you accomplice to? Uh, each person who makes a pact with the Devil John carries a mark. Uh, what's the mark hidden somewhere on their body? Uh, why can't you just find and kill the bastard? And uh, okay. what is rumored to be the Devil John's one weakness? Why is it difficult to exploit? Uh, let me know if you want to reread any of those. They're also in the book on page 6. And for those who don't know, uh, this game is by Teapot Dome Games, and it's free on Drive-Thru RPG. Uh, if you just go to um, Drive-Thru RPG and search for the Devil John Moulton. Okay. Uh, do we have an order we're starting with, or are we just going in any order? Mm. Yeah, say, uh, no, any order. Okay. I'll just think about that a little bit more then. Um, I think... Um, whenever Devil John's corruption has spread to a town, mm -hmm. uh, I think the physical parts of the location start deteriorating. Oh, there's the physical, um, physical, uh, yeah. So, like, um, sink rolls of yeah. Beer. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, bits cool. of houses fall down, tiles come off roofs. Um, so the people just, aren't affected, yeah. but their positions are. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, Signor Ubalus just posted the link in chat. That's exactly the link I'm talking about. Oh, Definitely. cool. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Mark, mark, mark. Um, Cool. Um, okay. So he he like physically erodes the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Um, anyone else? Anyone else got uh, other questions they wanted to answer? Hmm. They're all good. Yeah. yeah. They're all good. Well, if you, wanna, you, don't, you don't have to pick one, right? Like if you want to answer some other ones, totally. Yeah, Please. but. Oh, so for the ominous portents, I think there is always at least a minor earthquake right before Molten arrives mm, to a town, cool. like right near the town, even if it's nowhere near a fault line or anything. Ooh. 
so they tend to like pick up in steam as he gets closer and then stays in the town so it's less like a, an earthquake oh. that happens it's like a rumbling yeah it's like a tremor that would shake the earth enough to like let you know that he's coming yeah if, if you could detect it as a symbol you would know yeah um, it's like his phone call yeah effectively yeah. <laughs> i think uh anyone that makes a pact with devil with the devil john um like sometime after the whole thing happens and takes effect like they have a cross like on their left arm oh okay in some sort of fit of irony is that the mark yeah that's like, like the mark like a christian cross or like an x like a like a christian cross oh, okay cross. yeah got it is it like inverted no, no, it's like full on just a regular cross, like right on, like kind of like just going down their arm. All right. Yeah. So here, here you go. Here's here's what Sosie wants to know. Why can't you just blow his brains out with a forty four? Uh, you gotta find him. So you have to find him. <laughs> sure. Is that it? It's just that he's really elusive. Nah, it's too easy. No, 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 no. Of course not. Um, Is it that someone someone already did, and it didn't and it didn't work? Ooh, it's possible. If anybody, it would probably be Laszlo, and that's why he came back from the dead. Oh, I have a suggestion. Sure. Um, I don't know if this might be like breaking the game or something. What if the Devil John is like not a singular entity, and a part of him exists in every single person that he makes a pact with? So we're hunting down every single manifestation of him, including ourselves. In the end, that's very existential. It's like know. the devil John is us all along. Uh, exactly. Kind of thing. The devil yeah. John. We're 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 pushing that to the back of our minds and focusing on everyone that isn't us that has to yeah. die first. Yeah. Um that's fine as because uh the devil John um well then how did you learn your power, right? So the devil John is sort of like Sauron like without a ring then. He like kind of just like is this force? Yeah, that, like, that's exists. what I'm thinking. That's but that might be go that might be going like too existentialist. So that's why I threw it out. I wanted to. Yeah, I guess the problem I guess, I... that could work. However, you still need some. Like you're still you're tracking someone. So like who would who is like the big person you're tracking right now? Then. Yeah, because they're supposed because from what I got from it, it was like is the devil John is supposed to be a thing that we're tracking? Or yeah, something. okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. So he would need like even if we did that, he would need like a main body. Exactly, that's what I'm getting at, right? Like yeah. I'm I, I would be cool with that, but. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that'd still work. Um hmm. designing a person to be interesting is always difficult. <laughs> Finding forces to be interesting is always easier. Uh, uh I can only be killed like, like on a certain day. Um can only be killed um by a certain like anointed bullet. Can only be killed, you know. Like MacGuffin, MacGuffin, yeah, this shit. We gotta get the coal from Supernatural. That's how we kill. You can him. only be killed by the gun who killed Abraham Lincoln. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm not that specifically, but I, I might want to expand on that a little bit. Yeah, he can only be killed with his own gun. Yeah, some something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I'm. I, I would like to throw out something for what. The rumor for his one weakness is mm, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I would, I would say, the rumor might be that you can only get him when he's sleeping. You know that okay. whenever he's unaware is the only time you can get him. Mm -hmm. but why mm -hmm. it's difficult to exploit is no one's ever seen him. Yeah. Blink. His eyes have never closed. Yeah, yeah, no one's ever seen him sleep. To the people. Yeah. No one's ever seen him, even so much as, like, blink or shade his eyes. So people like just that. assume that if he's not doing it, it's probably a fatal flaw. Mm -hmm. Totally. Okay. No one's ever seen him sleeping. That'll work. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, I think that's that will do for our um, generation of stuff, right? So we all have a reason why we need each other. Mm -hmm. um, we all came up with ideas for the man himself. Uh, I think then we can begin working on collaborating for our town, right? Yes. Yay. Cool. So um, we're gonna start. So let's let's get into play. 
Uh, the first thing we do is that um, our players are going to be coming to our new town, and this is the town. This is the town um, that that we're going to start on on our path to to finding the Devil John Moulton. So the way this work the way this is working is that we're all hunting down the Devil John Moulton, right? And the Devil John has left mm. like you know corrupted people in his on like in like a trail of like kind of like corrupted breadcrumbs around him, right? And so we're going from town to town, um, finding more and more about about him. Um, as well as about uh, kind of like what's going on in the town. And so every time we go to, we're looking for kind of like signs of corruption and trying to get out the next detail for the next place, right, that we're trying to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, the way this game mm-hmm. works outside of the game is that we're going to make up this town together. I don't know what the next clue is either. Like, it's going to be kind of like I'm supposed to go with whatever seems right, like in, at the time, fictionally. So... Um, Let's, so let's let's co- uh, collaboratively do this for this town. So, um, how do the people here make their living? Um, mining town. Okay. Mining what? How about like something inherently dangerous, like radium? Like more so than just you know mining is already yeah. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, something that is inherently like poisonous or is dangerous in its own way. So like radium, lead, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something radioactive, definitely. Ugh, lead mining. Lead Let's mining. Lead, lead mining. Okay. okay. Lead mining. Yeah. Is this before everyone knows how crappy lead is? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before everyone's like, oh, you know, this can kill you if you touch it this one way. Yeah. <laughs> Rub lead on your skin. It's the no cure. Oh. So what's the name of the town then? Is it like Plumbers Boom or something like that? <laughs> Plumbers Boom. Plumbers. Like because that's like where like plumbum is where lead comes from, right? That's oh, okay. Plumber. Sure. So I, did I was, not like, know I was thinking like plumbers, like plumbers uh, gulch or something like that, or like plumbers, yeah. plumbers boom. Gulch is always a good word to put in a name. Yeah, I like gulch. <laughs> gulch, <laughs> gulch is a solid wild west name. Yep. <laughs> cool. So the people in the town they make uh, lead. Um, plenty of bullets. Yeah, how does the devil's mm-hmm. John corrupting influence touch this town? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have an idea. The uh, earth, the uh, earthquake caused another yeah. vein to open up. Yeah, I was gonna say there's something deep in the mines, right? Yeah, like yeah. That's, that's the obvious one. Like there's a there's like, like there's a, a dark secret in the mines. Um, yeah. yeah, dark secret. Yeah, there was like a collapse or something, but it opened up a new set of tunnels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, how is the existing order here unjust or harmful to its citizens? Uh, I think it's run by a corrupt mining company. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the first one that I think of, right? It was easy mm-hmm. to... People uh, are highly incentivized to go to the mines. Yeah. yeah. And they hire in immigrant workers and mm-hmm. they die. And they get cemented in the mines. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're, you're, Signal, you're pretty... They mine too deep and too greedily. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, the earthquake caused the mini gun, ex- uh, oh, mining explosives to detonate. Oh yeah, totally. And that makes a perfect sense. Thanks, Sozy. That's a great idea. Mm-hmm. So um, I came up with a name for the town or for the the company. Hackard and Plunkett Co. runs the cool. town. They probably right. have a mayor of the town, but like, of course, like you know, they're not. It's the right, power right. behind the. Yeah, you know, it's the puppet of the company. It's a mayor and CEO. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's I didn't even think of that. Oh yeah. I was I was thinking Hackett it was the they they just is the mayor. they just paid for the mayor's um yeah. electorate campaign, right? Oh yeah. But no, like if oh, so it's the CEO is actually the mayor. Yeah. yeah. That'd be oh, okay. Cool. Um, so we actually CEO. have a thriving town more than just uh, it's probably decre- no, nah, it's probably I don't know, maybe. Well, That's if a major hard, corporation right? is putting their CEO in charge of it, it's probably pretty huge. Or it could just be a small little like operation, right? Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. Um, let's see, old English. I'm looking for names. Or maybe just Cowboys. The, 167. The, the CEO wants to be here to make sure that the operation is going well, but like yeah. the lead doesn't stay here for very long. Okay. Or maybe something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's for transport. So there's probably like a rail station here. Yeah. Like so he's small... just a hard ass that wants to see just micromanage everything. So he's yeah. In yeah. charge of the town. Basically, just booted the mayor out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the man now. Okay. Just stacks um, of lead on his desk. <laughs> the desk has collapsed. Uh, Gus Barlow is his name. 
Gus Barlow. Gus Barlow. Um, he sounds so. like a douchebag already. Yep. <laughs> so there's a rail station there. Um, yeah. yeah. He's got suspenders, and he always does the, 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 does the evil suspender thing. Oh, yeah, of course. He, does the <laughs> he looks like Mr. Monopoly Man, thing. right? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, I'm going to send a link in chat as well. Uh, this is a free PDF put on by Jason Morningstar and the Stories Games crew. This is called the Story Games Names Project, and there are a ton of names in this book. If you ever wanted to run a game um, oh, yeah, and need yeah. people with names, this is this is the link that I always send people. It is fantastic. I use it in, in my story game meetups whenever I can, uh, whenever I need names. And on page 167 of this book are cowboy names. So in case we ever need people's ideas or stuff like that, it, we have some stuff available. So that's what I'm looking at right now to come up with cool. these names. So, um, so yeah, Gus Barlow, um, yeah, he's very like a, a portly, snobbish, suspender wearing. Um, if anyone has seen the network, the movie, uh, uh, like like the head of the head of the communications company, who goes like, <laughs> "You're meddling in the primal forces of nature." <laughs> like, okay, no, okay, whatever. Um, so. Who? Okay, how does the injustice or dark secret? Oh, turn- this guy. How does the injustice or dark secret turn the townsfolk against and harm one another? Um, your pay is directly, like, your pay is directly how much lead you bring in mm. every day. Mm. So now everyone's like, I'm going to steal your lead no matter, I'm going to get as much as I can, how, how, whatever it takes. Six, so we yeah, opened up, um, we 16 opened up tons, our- right? Yeah. We opened up an even richer vein, so everyone's just like f- swarming into the mines. Yeah, and so everybody everybody gets paid in company company dollar as well. Yeah. Okay. I forget what's all that. People get assigned to like the lower, richer lead veins. Oh yeah, totally. Some people the get lackeys. Yeah. Higher, it's, like dry yeah. ones. Yeah, that's how he keeps power, right? He, he assigns. Yeah, yeah. It's uh cronyism. Yeah. If you annoy him, he puts you higher. Yeah. yeah. Higher up in the in the also yeah. Or, or, like, responsible for finding new veins or something like that. Yep. <laughs> You're the one that has to detonate the TOT. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, how will the situation in town get worse if the PCs do nothing? Um, so it sounds like it would run itself into the ground. Yep. I, I was thinking that uh, maybe the Devil John's influence would actually erode... The tunnel so much that the time would oh, just yeah. disappear. Collapse. Oh, mm-hmm. the mine will totally collapse. Oh yeah. The oh, time yeah. would just vanish. It would just And the entire town dies. Oh my yeah. god, the entire town sinks into like a giant sinkhole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that'd be even better. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> they mine What's into up? the darkness dungeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> who I in this town uh cool. No, I I take that a lot. Um who in this town can offer the PC something that they want? Mm. Uh, what do we want? Uh, the, you you need to know the Devil John Mullen, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's that specific information. Okay. It could also be something fictionally, like depending on your characters, right? Well, like, see, that's what I was asking. Like, oh. okay. Maybe. Both of do those we, work and totally. Do fine. we suspect that the CEO has maybe made a deal with maybe the devil? Yeah. Do you suspect kind- that? But um, right, yeah, exactly. Whether it's true or not is entirely yeah, whatever. yeah. So maybe he can offer us information. So yes. yeah, maybe. Um, what's the company's name again? Hackard and Plunkett. Yes. So maybe Hackard and Plunkett, like very recently, became like the top lead company. Yeah. Maybe that kind of like ticked oh, off our like, like a hey. meteoric rise. Yeah. 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 So I, don't know, I guess I guess Gus's last name can't be Barlow, right? It has to be like Hackard. That makes more sense. How about Hacker killed Plunkett? Oh, oh, that's better. Yeah, and and like after that, there's been a meteoric rise. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. That's fucking awesome. All right. Um, and he he he, he still keeps the Plunkett name just as yeah. a yeah, just as <laughs> fuck you to everyone who still work for him. Well, I mean, just because he killed him, like he can't like you know go out publicly and do that stuff right so like he he keeps it in sort of like oh it's in honor of of our our late oh, I know, yeah, exactly. yeah. like right. it's totally just a fucking he's like he's on a, an extended three. vacation yeah, yeah. um <laughs> so hacker um hacker's info in the devil john um cool 
uh, who in this town has okay so that who in this town has a demand that the PCs can't ignore hmm uh, huh Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the previous mayor? What what are you thinking? Like obviously that he wants mm. to like resume his power, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why so can't maybe, we him? maybe he demands that we investigate for dodgy wrongdoings by the company? Hmm. Um, I like the old mayor being the person. Yeah, I just it's don't know what the yeah. Just gotta find the reason. Um, <laughs> what if he's just as corrupt as Hackard? Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe. But now it's just like, no, I'm supposed to be the mayor. I want to run. The, I, I want to run the, run the town. Oh, so are we at, at the same time that we're going after John Moulton? Are we actively trying to kill everyone who he has marked, or is that just you know if we feel like it? Oh, that's like an optional quest. Well, <laughs> all right. Then here's an idea. What if we know that the previous mayor, for certain, made a deal with the devil, John Moulton? One hundred percent. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's just trying to get back into his same corrupt position of power that he had before, but okay. he's the lesser of two evils. Yeah, and and we can't ignore it uh, because he has information, as Sissy says. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Hank Lane. We think we think Gus did, but we know the old mayor did. Right, and the old okay. mayor definitely has information on his whereabouts. One hundred percent. TDJ. All right. Um. Which PC is already involved in this town's problems? How is this PC tied to that town? Or 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 the next one could also work. How does a PC's past come back to haunt them in this town? Who has a history here? I'm going to stay quiet here now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was also going to stay quiet. <laughs> uh... Secret secrets are fun. Um, um, could be, I think Quinn might be probably the best person for this. Okay. Um, I was just thinking that you have like a, a gambling debt here or something like that, right? Mm. Mm. I was just thinking something like that, just something simple. Uh, that could also work for anybody though. Yeah. But tying Laszlo to locations is kind of hard. Oh, you know what? I, um, maybe some people know of Laszlo's actual identity, and he's basically coming back to tie up loose ends. And that's his involvement with the town. Uh, okay. Um. So, so people that know that he's quote unquote dead. Yeah, people that know he should be dead or okay. know his actual name, and he's basically just going back to get rid of them. Okay. Do you know who they are? Uh, Can they be family members? I think I would have probably killed all of my previous family in my hometown. Well, um, they're extended family, like your uncle or something. How about we... Because uh, I'm thinking of making it like a surgeon that did some work on me to maybe like reattach a thumb or something just temporarily. Oh, so he works for the company uh, now? But... Um, who is also a family member if you want to add that angle. Oh, no, that's fine. No, a surgeon's fine. Okay. So a surgeon so who, a doctor. Had, yeah, who has, like, medical records on me that I need to go back and just, like, purge and kill him. Um, Doc Porter. Are we allowed to have that's more good. than one yeah, of connection? Course. Of course. Because I, I, something I, I thought of that, that could be kind of cool is, like, I know the sheriff back from when I was a sheriff. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And so, like, he's also kind of uh like his power has been extremely diminished by uh hacker to plunkett yeah sheriff ross fletcher um, awesome god this book's so good for names <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay cool um all right um 
I think that's that's pretty good, actually. I think I think we're we're set with Plumber's Gulch then. So that awesome. means we're about time. It's ten oh one. So we're gonna take a quick break here. Uh, we're mm-hmm. gonna take a five minute break, and uh, so about ten ten oh six ten oh seven. Uh, we'll be back and we'll actually begin with our first scenes of the Devil John Moulton. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for thanks for thanks for coming out and, and checking out this game. And we'll see you see you in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs>